Before I even start this review, I just had to showcase the red color option, guys. Check this out. The reflection of that thing is unlike anything else on the market right now. It's absolutely stunning and easily the best color available for the LG Velvet. But anyways, let's crack on with the review, shall we? Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project, it's Tony here, your favorite YouTuber. Today I have the great opportunity to review the LG Velvet almost one year after the release. Now, in 2021, it's very important to understand what's going on with LG. There was some news that they have to decide what to do with their mobile phone business because they've been losing money for years now. I think the last year they've lost 750 million pounds or dollars or whatever the currency is, which is absolutely crazy. All of their other businesses are making money and their mobile phone business is always struggling, guys. However, there's one device that, well, is an exception. The LG Velvet. I was very skeptical in the beginning. I was like, hmm, LG Velvet is a big screen phone. It's just 1080p. It's not a flagship phone, but the price is high. The market availability is limited, which is always the case with the LG phones. It's not available here in the UK officially, although it would have been quite expensive anyways. So what you can do is buy it from Germany. They had a deal over there for like 208 euros or something like that on a 12 month plan pretty much three minutes internet this and that and what people did was they got the phone and they've put it on ebay straight away that's where i got my unit from ebay i think it was about 280 euros something like that so if you go on ebay after all the taxes and deliveries and this and that under 300 pounds you can get a brand new shiny unit now if you're interested to know what's the difference between the 4g and the 5g version i've got a separate video going through all the details about this phone and um, let's get a few things out of the way first 6.8 inch p oled screen which is a plastic oled screen and 1080p now, it's a problem if you're watching YouTube videos on the highest quality available, which is, well, not available on this phone because it's 1080p. It's a little bit unfortunate because LG was the first manufacturers in the world together with Oppo to release the phone with, uh, you know, quad HD screen, the LG G3. I think it was 2014 or 2013, like seven, eight years ago. And having 1080p, now it doesn't make any sense especially considering that on most quad hd phones you can turn down the resolution to 1080p so they definitely chipped out on the screen the other thing is that on very low brightness if you're reading something if you're into the settings you can see just a little bit of a grain and the other unit the 4g unit that i had had a little bit of a green tint coming out from one side of the screen and going to the other one but that's only on very low brightness in dark environment but that's something that you should be aware of they kind of chipped out on the screen otherwise the colors the saturation the hdr the brightness everything is okay on the screen and in everyday use is actually all right the other thing the uh, snapdragon 765g chipset over here it's not the flagship uh you know soc the gaming i'm getting about 110 fps on cash job but the thing is that the graphics quality is just not the same as the flagship socs over there and if you're playing you know call of duty or genshin impact or heavy games like that that's definitely not the best option guys but in uh, you know day-to-day -day usage casual games the performance is generally all right next problem we're gonna get with lg phones is updates and unfortunately this phone is no exception so this trend is going to continue with the lg phones i'm afraid storage wise 128 gigs of storage with micro sd card check unfortunately six gigs are from while 6 gigs of RAM is okay in 2021, in 2027th, this is not going to be okay. But anyway, the other thing is that there is no XDA uh, support of any kind of this phone. I mean the XDA developers community, you can't really unlock the bootloader, there are no custom ROMs, there is absolutely nothing about this phone. 
software wise the lg you know regular ui skin or whatever it's called it's similar to samsung one and although it works fine there are just tiny little things that are a little bit annoying for example the notch yes of course you have the notch over here you can't hide the notch apart from lg apps and by lg apps they mean settings and pretty much that's it fortunately in the play store you've got a nacho notch application which is free and does exactly what it says uh, in the description of the application, although the name suggests something else, uh, it says that it can hide the notch pretty much system-wide and that's exactly what it does, hides the notch. So that problem is out of the way, although, you know, there's third-party solution. Otherwise, you've got a team store, you can apply different icons and teams, most of them are paid and they're not really good as well. So yeah, the software works, it's fine, but just a little things that are a little bit annoying. But anyways, guys, moving on to the battery department, 4,300 milliamp hours of battery, huge battery. Now, you've got wireless charging at 9 watts, slow one, and you've got regular charging at 16 watts. A 16 watt charger is supplied in the box, which is extremely outdated and extremely slow the thing is that lg are selling a 30 watt charger you have to buy separately i think they've got it in the us and i have myself a 30 watt charger and i'm getting different results but i'm gonna have to look at my notes because there are too many numbers to remember now half an hour gives me 42 percent with the stock charger 45 percent with my charger and 52 percent with the lg charger one hour gives me 78 percent with the stock charger 81% with my charger and 84% with the LG fast charge and finally 1 hour 42 minutes with the stock charger, 1 hour 40 minutes with my charger and 1 hour 30 minutes with the LG fast charger which is bad simply because we've got 120 watt charging in some phones guys so having you know your phone charged in 1 hour 30 minutes it's really not good, but for some people that means that the battery longevity will be, uh, you know, extended. So you might use your phone for a few more years without having to change the battery. Uh, I guess time will tell. Now, the other thing you should consider about this phone is the design. Guys, you've got the Google Assistant button over here, but the button is very small, is very slim and thin, so it doesn't get in your way. You, you can not use it if you prefer uh, the power button and the volume buttons are actually excellent guys you've got a 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom over here uh, you don't have the uh, you know high resolution quad duck like the most lg flagship phones what does that mean well if you're just a regular casual user like me you don't have a super high-end 1000 pounds headphones it doesn't make any difference it is as loud You've got 3D, um, you know, settings, you've got equalizer settings, you've got pretty much everything. So don't worry about the 3.5 millimeter jack, you're not missing out on the duck. The speakers, stereo speakers over here, absolutely amazing speakers, guys. Very loud, very crisp, I'm very happy with the speakers. The phone itself is a little bit on the tall side, the edges are curved, but at least it's very nice in the hand, it's very sleek, I don't mind the curvature uh, at all, you don't have any accidental touches and it gives the phone this kind of premium look that we all lust after. The phone is not too heavy either, 180 grams. So yes, it's big but it's not that heavy uh, and it's a little bit more narrow than the other phones which makes it well, sort of pocketable, but let's say it is all right. Colors wise, of course, in Europe, we've got the two ugliest colors. There's the plain Aurora black or whatever they call it. It's just black, it's not very nice. Uh, and you have to put a case because it's very slippery. And uh, it's a fingerprint magnet, of course. I prefer the silver one simply because the frame is silver as well. In Korea and in America, they've got the more beautiful the green color and the whatever rainbow the, the other color is. 
but they're not available over here but that's that's it is what it is pretty much and i was about to talk about the cameras but i decided to make a separate video covering them because although they are not flagship cameras they definitely get the job done so all i'm gonna say is just they're all right at this stage and the last thing that i'm gonna talk about in this review is the security you've got a fingerprint sensor over here at the front which is a little bit on the slow side and it doesn't really work properly if your hands are just a little bit wet guys you've got a double tap to wake which helps uh, the unlocking process a little bit and you don't have any sort of face unlock and some people say that that's yeah that's google's security feature this and that well there's the oppo find x2 pro over here i always had excellent face unlock i had mask unlock a few months ago and i'm on android 11 already and i still get face unlock so that's just laziness on their side which unfortunately gives you know some negative points in the security department of this phone so let's get to the conclusion of this video guys did i enjoy using the lg velvet and can i recommend it to most people and my answer is absolutely yes although it's not a perfect device by any means people say that it's um, jack of all trades and master of none which is exactly the case with the lg velvet apart from the premium audio experience i would say this phone is not the best in any category but it definitely gets the job done in well all other categories there are little annoyances which i don't think are going to be fixed with android 11 uh but yeah overall lg managed to put out a great package and remember something guys lg phones you have to buy them a few months after the release because the price went down every single time and especially now uh you know with all the news that lg are probably selling their mobile business and this and that and this and that well probably the price is gonna go down even further guys so if you can get one of these phones under 300 pounds it's an absolute bargain and i guess it depends whether you want 5g or 4g the difference is on the battery life guys on the 4g version i'm always getting between 8 and 10 hours of screen on time and on the 5g version sometimes you can get six hours of screen on time if you're uh, under 5g coverage although you should average between seven and eight hours of screen on time anyways so yeah that's about it guys i have very warm feelings towards the lg velvet i was a little bit skeptical in the beginning i saw all the shortcomings and i was like man ah this phone but it definitely grew on me and having played with both 4g and 5g versions i can say that that's legitimately a good phone and i can wholeheartedly recommend this phone for most of you out there guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this review if you have you know you know what to do subscribe to vlogging project and make sure you check my other lg videos because i'm gonna do a few of them actually a camera test uh you know the speed test that i already have and something else this cool wallpaper over here how to install it that's lg v50 wallpaper so yeah thank you very much for watching again guys and i'm gonna see you in the next one adios